Hey folks, it's Ken from skillwave.training. You know, Power Query's got this really cool feature that's available with one click that allows you to combine all files in a folder, builds your sample transformation. You can work on one specific file and then applies that to every file in the folder to combine them into one big table. Well, a little while ago, I was actually working with a user in a forum where they needed the same functionality, but for working with worksheets, worksheets in a workbook. And Power Query doesn't have a one-click access to be able to build up that structure. But that's exactly what we needed to do. So I helped them do it and I thought, you know what? This is actually kind of cool. Why don't we share this on our YouTube channel? So why don't you join me and I'll show you exactly how we can make that happen. All right, so here's the data that I'm working with. I've got three worksheets that follow a similar structure with different data. The output worksheet is only here because this is the format that I want. I want to combine all of these worksheets into one big, long collection here. The challenge is, is that there's no tables inside this workbook, so I can't use the standard trick of being able to go in and creating a blank query, which I can point to the uh, equals excel.currentworkbook function. So you can see that comes up blank. And the reason being is there's no tables, there's no named ranges, there's nothing in here. And the Excel.current workbook function today does not enumerate worksheets. This is a little bit frustrating. Now I know that there are some people that would look at this and go, well, that's okay, Ken, I know how to get past this. I can go right click on this new query, create a new query and pull from an external Excel workbook. But I would advise you to never ever do that. Because the problem is with that is that even though you'll be able to see the worksheets, the challenge is it only reads from the most recently saved copy. And if it's in the workbook that you're in, it's very easy to get yourself in a cyclical reference between sessions. And that's a really hard thing to debug if you're handing it off to somebody else and they don't know what the heck is going on. So we don't do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw away this power query here. And I'm going to close this workbook and rather than do my work inside the workbook, I'm actually going to separate it and I'm going to use a separate workbook using that one as the data source. And then we can actually build this up to see how it's going to get to go and work. All right, so let me go and get my file. I'm going to go get data from file from Excel workbook. The file that I'm looking for here is this one, source data. That's what we were just looking at. And I'm going to choose to import it at which point I'll be taken to the query preview window. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I actually wanna get into the root of the workbook so that my goal here is to actually build a function where I can look at each worksheet individually and see what's going on and basically build it up kind of like I'd used a from file from folder scenario. So to do that, I'm gonna go right click on the source data here and choose transform data. And that will actually launch me using that folder which actually points to the root of the workbook. And inside here, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of tables that represent the individual worksheets. Now, the trick with this one here is that I don't want this output worksheet that was just there as a sample. So I'm going to go and say, look, let's filter this out. We'll get rid of the output from the sheet names. And I'm also going to filter down to just one kind of material here. I want to only have worksheets just in case somebody does add tables or named ranges. Don't want to duplicate anything there. So I'm just going to go and right click on this and say text filters equals in order to force this to have a sheet filter on it. All right. Now, in order to build this up with a function, there's a couple things I'm going to do. First thing is I'm going to right click this and I'm going to say reference. So that's my original source data file. This one here is going to be my consolidated output. But before I can do what I need to do here, I also need to have a parameter. So I'm going to go manage parameters, new parameter, and I'm going to make a new parameter here called sheet name. And just for fun, I'm actually going to go and use a list of values here. And the first one is going to be sheet one. And there we go. We're going to make that sheet two. Notice they are spelled and cased exactly as what we have for our sample sheet. So if this was actually a named sheet, you'd want to use the name. You wouldn't want to use sheet one, sheet two. They've got to match what's over here. And I'm going to leave sheet three alone on this one. And there's a reason why I'm going to do that as well, just for illustration purposes. I'll set my default value to sheet one and my current value is going to be sheet one as well. So when I go and say, okay, I've now created my parameter for sheet one and I can change it from sheet one to sheet two. Okay, so nice and easy there. 
Now, let's go and build this, this function that we actually want. We're going to start by building a sample transform for this. To do that, I want to transform one individual table here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in the white space next to the first table and I'm going to add this as a new query. What this does at this point in time is it makes me a new query that I am going to go and rename as my sample sheet transform. Oops, there we go. All right. And I just want to review the steps here really, uh, really quickly here. So if we look at the source, you'll notice that I actually started from output. That's the one that I actually um, created a new query from, but it has actually looked at the source as source data. That's the source for the output query. This is why I separated these. If I didn't do that, it would have actually duplicated the source data query with all of the steps there. I do not want that. So I made my source data, did a little filtering, referenced it, made my output query, and from in there, drilled into the table to create a new query. That now points to source data. The next thing that happens is there's a navigation step that takes place here where we actually drill into that source data query and we actually drill specifically into sheet one where the item kind is sheet. Now, as it happens, I've already filtered my source data to only work with sheets. So I don't actually need this at all. I can just get rid of it, which I'm going to do, although I'm not going to press enter quite yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, well, rather than drill into sheet one, what I really want to do is I want to drill into whatever that parameter name is. So at this point, I'm going to go with sheet name. And now I'm going to hit enter. Now at this point, what happens is Power Query goes and like really helpfully adds two more steps to the query for me. It added this promoted headers and changed type. Uh, I don't actually need these right now. So I'm just going to delete them and go back to what I actually had before for navigation, because I want to prove that the data is still the same. So I've changed what happened in the formula bar to where instead of drilling into a hard coded sheet one, I'm now drilling into the sheet name variable. The reason why this is important is because you can see the data here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I hop over to sheet name and change this to sheet two and go back to my sample sheet transform, notice that we don't start one, two, three, four, five anymore. What we've got is four, five, six, seven, because sheet two has different data. Another important thing to remember here is that I did not declare a sheet three, even though there are three sheets in this workbook. Okay. So just keep that in mind for, for longer term. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform my data here. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go and remove the top uh, one row. I'm then going to go and use my first row as headers. And then I'm going to go and remove my top one row again, because I don't need this blank row in here. And that's essentially as much transformation as I want to do to this particular file right now. Okay, now, this is a very special uh, query though. Why is that? Well, because, because it's fed by a parameter. So because the navigation step uses a parameter here, it's got to have at least one that enables this function, right? Click create function. And I can now go and give this one here a transform sheet name. When I do that, it will then go and move some stuff into some folders, but you'll notice that I got a transform sheet. That is related to the sample sheet transform, which is related to the sheet name variable. I'm going to do a little bit of organization here just to keep things nice and neat. I'm going to go right click. We're going to move this to a new group here. I'm going to call this one raw data connections. That's my source data. And then my output, you know, I'm going to load this out to somewhere. Uh, I'm going to load this to a worksheet today, but uh, usually what I do is I have a folder because I pretty much load everything to a data model. So I'm just going to call it data model just for consistency in my world. And then maybe I'll move this up. I always like my data model, my loading queries at the top, all my functions and transforms in the middle, and then my raw data connections right at the bottom because I actually look at these the least. All right. So now what we've done is we've actually replicated the same kind of structure that you see when you're dealing with a from file from folder scenario here, but let's see if it actually worked. So we're going to go to the output and we're going to go to add column. We're going to choose to invoke custom function. And I don't really care about what the column name is going to be. I'm going to use my transform sheet function. And the thing that I need to remember here is what needs to be fed into the sheet name variable. 
The big thing with the sheet name, remember I only declared one and two. We've got three sheets here. We need to make sure it works on all of them. The big thing to remember about this is whatever value we have here, that's for development only. When we feed something in here, it overrides that. So I'm going to take the value from the name column, which is one, sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. So there we go. And we say OK. What you'll notice is now I've got my transform sheet. Here's the table. That's for sheet one for sheet two, and indeed, sheet three also works. Nice. All right, so in my output now, I can go right click, remove other columns, expand everything. We'll just do a load more here. Don't need an original column name as prefix. There we are. And now because all the columns are selected, transform, detect data types, boom, there we go. So we've got a nice little function here that allows us to go and combine all these sheets. But why did we want to build that in the first place? Well, it's because of this. I realized I made a mistake. What the user wanted in actual fact was they didn't want anything except for product X. Well, I can filter that here, but I always prefer to do things closer to the data source. So I'm going to go back to my sample sheet transform. And right here, I'm going to filter my product to say, just give me product X. There we go. Got a nice little filter on there. I have done that for sheet two because that's what I'm actually looking at inside my sample here. But these two things are linked. So when I go and step back into my output now, you'll notice all I've got is product X. I've got a single sheet that I can actually play around with and get it set up the way I want. And if there's any errors in the data, let's say we got some weird error and I feel it's related to sheet one, I can come back and say, hey, you know what, let's just change this to sheet one and then we can go back and we can take a look at what's there. Or if there's a new sheet that I don't actually have a name for, well, I'm just going to come back in to manage parameter, go down here and say, hey, let's go and add sheet three. We'll say OK. And now change the sheet three and the sample sheet transform is now reflecting that data. So it gives me a whole nice bit of fidelity here to play around with different things to see what the data should actually look like. Now there's one last thing that I want you to recognize here when you go to load these. Uh, if I was in Power BI, this would be super easy. I would actually disable the load for all of these guys here and make sure that only output loaded to the data model. Of course, we're in Excel. We don't get to choose multiple load destinations. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to home Close and load, close and load two, and I'm going to load it to only create a connection, right? No adding to data model, no tables. We want only create connection. We'll say, okay, that's going to go and load all these guys out quickly with connection only. I can then go right click load two and change the load two behavior for the one output query to the worksheet. And boom, there we go. All the data is now nicely loaded to the worksheet. So hopefully that uh, you found that interesting, um, how we can actually go through and build a transform sheet function to transform every individual worksheet in the workbook, whether it's got a table style or not.